let me just start from the number theoretical question, and then I will relate this kind of uh, number theoretical equation with the uh, differential equation. Okay, let me let, let me start. So now I consider a question uh, just a will be a finite set of positive real numbers a1 uh, less or equal than a2 less or equal than a3 less or equal than a k right and then we say we define the set of arithmetic progressions a1 a1 a b capital will be a1 2 a1 3 a1 whatever a2 a2, 2A2, 3A2, whatever. And then AK, AK, 2AK, 3AK, whatever. So that we just make the uh, union, we, we make the arithmetic progression generated by any element of that. And then we consider the set M, which will be union of all these arithmetic progressions, okay? So that, uh, and then this set M is also a sequence, right? It, it is also a sequence of positive real numbers. Now, now the infinite sequence of positive real numbers. And uh, for, uh, that's, uh, let's say M1 less than M2, less than, uh, uh, less than M3. And so they, we sort them, we sort them in the increasing order. Right, and to any element uh, M N, we define the multiplicity. The multiplicity of the element is just nothing else as the, it is the uh, cardinality, so the number of the progressions such that this element belong to this progression. So that uh, one element, uh, I will give you an example. And then the resonance sequence associated to that is uh, who is this? Is the uh, sequence of multiplicities. So we take, we take the, the sequence, uh, the M as the union of these sequence, or union of these sequences. And uh, we just consider only the multiplicities of the elements over there, right? And then this sequence, this sequence of multiplicities is called the resonance sequence generated by B. And then the set A is called the initial sequence associated to the resonance sequence. Is it clear? Okay, and uh, then the natural question is coming uh, from the following, that given a resonance sequence, what can we say about the initial sequence? So that we, uh, in the beginning, what I was defining, I had an initial sequence and I had the resonance sequence generated by the initial sequence, okay? So that, uh, I, let, let me repeat, that I had the sequence A, just a finite set, and then I have the set of the arithmetic progressions, and then I have the union of arithmetic progressions, then I have the multiplicities, the, the multiplicity of any number, is nobody else is the the, uh, the the number of the progressions such that this element occur, right? And the resonance sequence is the sequence just of the multiplicity. So the, you forget everything. You just you 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 have the multiplicities, and that in such a way that the multiplicities are sorted in the same way as the uh, elements in the union of these sequences, right? Now, examples. Suppose that the resonance sequence is just uh, the uh, set of 
ones, one, 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 one. What you can say, you, you, you just from this thing, you somehow, uh, you conclude that the elements of the initial sequence were linearly independent over Q, over Russian. Okay, so that if there are just only ones in the resonance sequence, then you conclude that the, all the elements are linearly independent over Q. And uh, now, and then the question that uh, really interests the people from the combinatorics and uh, from the number theory, that suppose that your numbers are integers, that AIs are integers, then the resonance sequence, for example, then you, if you have the resonance sequence like this, one, 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 two, one, 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 two, one, 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 two, and whatever, then this sequence is generated by uh, a pair one, four, or a pair two, three. Okay. So that is this how we uh, resolve this inverse problem, that if you have the resonance sequence one, 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 two, one, 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 two, one, 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 two, then you, you know that the, the initial sequence is one, four, uh, or two, three, okay? Then let me start from the theorem uh, by uh, Sergio Alvarez, Daniel Berendt, myself, and uh, Darlan Giraud. Unfortunately, Darlan is also not with us, then uh, suppose that K uh, is bigger than one, so that the number of the elements of the uh, initial sequence is bigger than one. And uh, AIs are positive integers. And more than that, they are pairwise relatively prime. Then the resonance sequence totally determines the initial sequence. Okay, that if you have, if you know that the elements are positive integers, and more than that, it's uh, they're pairwise, uh, pairwise relatively prime, then uh, the initial sequence is just totally determined by the resonance sequence. And if you want, you can keep it as an Olympiad problem. Okay. And during my talk, if some of you uh, interest in Olympiads, then you can try to solve it as an Olympiad problem. Okay. So that again, that uh, you have uh, that you have more than you have more than two. And this is actually important because that if you have two elements as in the previous slide, that for instance, then you have this kind of resonance sequence, one, 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 two, one, 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 two, whatever. Then it's generated by one, one, four and two, three. And it really happens. But if you have uh, three elements, at least three positive integers, relatively prime elements, then the, uh, and you have the resonance sequence uh, generated by them, then, the, then, then the, you have the solution of that inverse problem. The resonance sequence just determines the initial sequence. Okay, so that you can uh, keep that. And uh, really, I tried even this problem in this kind of uh, Brazilian uh, student Olympiads. Uh, in the Brazilian student Olympiads, I gave that. And uh, unfortunately, no one solved. But, uh, but, 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 but uh, really, that it's extremely elementary. That it's elementary in the sense of number theory. That elementary doesn't mean trivial. Elementary means that uh, it, it really doesn't use any uh, 
let's say, sophisticated machinery, like uh, complex geometry and whatever. But uh, actually, it is uh, not trivial. And I will explain in the end of my talk, I will come back to the uh, solution. Uh, maybe not to the solution, but I, uh, I really just uh, will come to the algorithm how this uh, thing is related to the, uh, and how can, can we solve this uh, theorem as, uh, as really as an Olympian problem, okay? Good, so that this is number theoretical introduction or combinatorial, if you want, introduction. Then I will relate it with uh, the differential equation. So that uh, just I come back to this story, uh, how it occurred that it means uh, that once uh, me and Marina, we were visitor at IMPA at Rio de Janeiro, where they have this uh, Institute of Mathematics, uh, IMPA, Institute de Matematica Pura and Applicata, the Institute of Pure and Applied Mathematics. At that time, uh, Mauricio Peixota uh, was there. And Mauricio Peixota, perhaps you know this name, because of the structure stability theorem. That it is just, he's known in the, maybe Peixota, that uh, when he, there were uh, books in, just translated into Russian, that he was called Peixota. That he was just the father of the structure stability. In, the theory of dynamics, but uh, but the theory of the, the structure stability was actually uh, defined by Peixota for the uh, first order differential equations. But then uh, then he uh, did another thing. He was working also in the theory of second order differential equations, and actually even with the Renaton. But uh, even his works with Renaton were not so uh, famous as his work in uh, the in, uh, in in first order differential equation. Then, then, then that, that time, Pei Shota and invited me and Marina to Gimpa, and we discussed several subjects of the dynamics of uh, subanalytic geometry and whatever. And then uh, Mauricio introduced for us this focal decomposition, these focal equivalents. And then, uh, just since then, we started to, to think about it. Since then, we started to think about that. And uh, then, uh, what uh, the theorems I'm coming, I'm going to tell, it's a sort of feedback of the, uh, it's a sort of feedback of the uh, conversations with. Uh, Professor Peixot. Okay, again, consider an ordinary differential equation uh, of the second order in R to the M. So X two dots equal to F of X, X prime T, right? Just uh, F is a function of uh, two M plus R one variables, and then where X belong to R to the N, X prime belong to R to the N, and T belong to R. And then the focal decomposition is the partition of the space to R to the two N plus two. Uh, so that somehow, uh, if you have this uh, differential equation in R to the two n, in R to the n, right? Then uh, we consider the uh, the space R to the two n plus two as a set of all boundary two point boundary value problems. So that uh, what, what does it mean two point boundary value problems that you have uh, the boundary value problem here that x of t1 equals to x1, x of uh, t2 equals to x2, right? So the boundary value problem is just t1, t2, x1, x2, okay? Now we consider the space of all the boundary value problems 
And to the boundary value problem, we associate the number of the solutions, right? Uh, here, I forgot to include zero so that uh, here in the eyes, I, I forgot to include zero so that uh, we consider uh, what is sigma i of f is the uh, set t1, t2, x1, x2, such that this boundary value problem has exactly i solutions. So we consider a boundary value problem. Uh, x two dots equal of f x x x prime t f of uh, x of t one equal to x one uh, x of t two equal to x two. And here uh, I forgot to include zero, right? So then we consider the set of the problems such that such that uh, this problem has exactly I solution. Okay, I will show you examples. Just example that if you have the equation x two primes equal to zero, when what is, uh, what, who are the sets sigma i's? So sigma zero is the set uh, t1, t2, x1, x, x2, such that t1 equals to t2 and x1 is not equal to x2. Sigma infinity is the set t1 equals to t2, x1 equals to x2, right? And sigma r or sigma 1 in this case is just a complement of the sigma 0 uh, union sigma infinity. Okay, so again, the if t1 equals to t2 and x1 equal, is not equal to x2, then the boundary value problem, uh, x of t1 equals to x1, x of t2 equals to x2, uh, for the equation x2 primes equal to zero, has no solutions, right? Uh, if x1, just the, 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 the trivial observation, if t1 equals to t2, x1 equals to x2, it has infinitely many solutions. And otherwise, it, it, it has just one solution. Then uh, another problem that you consider uh, x2 do, uh, two, two primes equal to minus x, right? And what happens in this case? In this case, we have uh, sigma zero, Sigma zero, it's more, more complicated. It's T1 equals to X to T2 plus pi times K. And X1 is not equal to X2, uh, is not equal to uh, minus one to the K times X2. Uh, sigma infinity is T1 equals to T2 plus uh, pi times K and X1 equals to equals to minus one to the k times x2. And then in the, this case again, uh, sigma one is the uh, complement of the union x1, uh, sigma zero times sigma infinity. Then the uh, definition that the focal equivalence that two equations, x two point equal to f of x, x, uh, x two prime, sorry, equal to f x, x prime t and x two prime equal to g x, x prime t are called focally equivalent if there is a homeomorphism, right? Uh, homeomorphism uh, from the set of all the two, all two boundary uh, of two points problem to itself, uh, this, uh, such that this homeomorphism sends uh, the sigma i of f to the sigma i of g, for all g. Okay. And, uh, and, and then uh, you, you know that uh, and another uh, 
requirements for the uh, another requirement for this homeomorphism is that uh, this kind of uh, the homeomorphism H should be of the following form. It doesn't mix the time and the space variables so that uh, it preserves the time variables and then uh, the space variables are just moved according to the time variable. So the, this is uh, so, so, so called that it preserves the vertical foliation of the world. So that H of T uh, H of T1, T2, X1, X2 is uh, of, of this kind of form. And the question is uh, make a classification of the uh, of the differential equations of this form. Uh, with respect to the to the uh, focal equivalence, so that uh, it, it's usual, you know, that uh, the uh, structure stability theory of Peixoto was done as follows: that he really considered uh, the set of the vector fields, and uh, he just used the homeomorphisms that just send the trajectory of the first vector field to the, uh, to the trajectories of the second one. And this uh, was the, 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 just the famous topological equivalence of the uh, dynamical systems of the vector fields. And now that uh, for the second order, it's more difficult to consider this kind of topological equivalence because you have more variables. And then that it, it, it's basically it's one of the, uh, the Peixota and Tom, they considered uh, this kind of the uh, focal decomposition, just the decomposition of the center of all the two points boundary value problems with respect to the uh, focal equivalent. Right, and then the, and basically this was what Mauricio was asking to Marina and me, that how can we uh, just, if we can, uh, if we know something about that classification, right? And uh, what really happened then, what really happened then, that, uh, what really happened then, then uh, while we were at IMPA, we were uh, really not uh, so able to uh, solve uh, to solve this kind of problem, uh, but we started to discuss it. Another thing that we discussed that uh, with Pavel Sobolevsky, the father of Marina, and uh, then uh, he said, "Okay, that just if you want, to, uh, of course, this kind of classification problem uh, just in general is definitely unsolvable." But this was clear in the uh, in the case of uh, just when we discussed it with Peixoto. But while uh, say that let's start from something more elementary. Then what is the case of the uh, differential equation? What is the more the most elementary, most the simple case? The simple case is the case of the linear equations, right? So that uh, the equations in, where you have x two do, uh, to two, uh, two primes equal to a of t times x uh, plus b of t times x prime uh, plus c of t, where uh, that uh, a, b, and c depend uh, continuously on t. Okay, let, let, try to do that. Try to do that. Try to do to see what really happens for the uh, for the uh, differential equations, and you see that in the beginning I said to you about the uh, resonance sequences. Now I was talking about differential equations, even about this kind of top topological classification. And uh, this is a point where this just uh, if you will follow me, you will see that from this point these two problems really will uh, come to the uh, come together. So that the uh, problem of the number theory will come together with the uh, just uh, with the uh, with the, the problem of the differential equation. Just follow me a little bit more, and you will see that. So that uh, we will start from the point 
uh, from the point that it was an extremely nice observation of Marie, that, uh, you know, that, that somehow that, the that, that in the linear case, this kind of classification problem is two dimensional. Two dimensional. That uh, even if you have the dimension uh, n equal to 2000, that even, the, even in this case, uh, that the uh, classification problem is two dimensional. Even the, if the dimension uh, of the uh, space where you, equate, you have the equations is extremely big. So that uh, the, so the structural lemma is a lemma how these sigma i's look like. So that uh, and this was the k lemma the, uh, where we brought all these kinds of the theory as a consequence. So wh wh what is about the, this k lemma? So that there is a subset sigma star uh, in the R two the plane of times t1, t2, such that if the pair t1, t2 does not belong to a sigma star, then then what? Then the Then x1, uh, t1, t2, x1, x2 belong to sigma 1. So if we are not in sigma star, then you have exactly one solution. But when we uh, belong to sigma star, we have all zero solutions or no solution or uh, infinitely many solutions. Okay. So that if we belong to sigma star, then all we have no solutions, or we have infinitely many solutions, right? And uh, three, that uh, for any t10, t20 from sigma star, then the intersection of uh, this set with, with this, just we consider the plane, uh, two n dimensional plane corresponding to T1, T2 fixed, to T1, uh, zero, T2, zero fixed, and uh, X1, X2 are wherever, then the intersection to that is a linear subspace. Intersection of that to uh, sigma infinity is a linear subspace. So that, and this is an, an important point. And uh, actually the point is that the, the dimension of this intersection depends on T10, T20. So somehow the classification problem in the case of the, uh, of the, of uh, the linear equations, and I guess that something like this, one can, uh, that the, your audience is the, the audience of PGE, right? And uh, I guess something like this, that if someone wants, will make a generalization of this theory for PGEs, then the structure lemma will remain. The structure lemma, they will remain, but definitely the geometry and topology related to that will be much more difficult. Uh, then, but uh, the, in this case that you have the, uh, the so you, you have the sum subset, uh, that where, where that for, for these pairs, where you have the sigma, while that, that it belongs to, to the complement. And actually that uh, there is one more observation that uh, if you have the analytic, if you have uh, the coefficient A and B, A, B and C to be analytic, then actually this set is a curve. And the sigma star is a curve. 
but if it is not, then uh, then, 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 then it could be quite, uh, if it's not analytic, it could be quite difficult, right? And then uh, this is a structural lemma. And uh, let us, uh, so that the structural lemma said that, uh, and, and, and this is the, the main contribution of Marina in this uh, theory. And uh, you will see that plenty of things were really uh, somehow were really uh, consequences of that. There were really quite uh, serious consequences of uh, this kind of uh, structure lemma. And actually what I was talking about that the, this relation with the number theory were really uh, sequences of this uh, structure lemma, right? Good. Now, one-dimensional case. One-dimensional case. We consider an equation x to dot equal to a of t x plus b of t. Now the just functions. Now b for just the uh, functions, and then the, these what we discussed with uh, Marina and Pavel. And then this uh, really, this one dimensional case was totally resolved in the case of the uh, linear equation with uh, any kind of uh, A1 and F2 just being continuous. Even in this case, uh, in the uh, first well, dimensional case, then uh, also this sigma star is a curve. Okay, and so then in the one dimensional case, we just come to uh, that some technical definition. Uh, that uh, the technical definition is that the equations uh, where you have x equal to a of t times x, x to uh, Two primes equal a, 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 a of t x plus b of t, and equation x two prime equal to a of a one of t x plus b one of t. Actually, this if if you have x prime, then you can have the coordinate change that uh, will just eliminate this kind of x prime. So that these things are. Uh, Called focally equivalent with respect to the segment T1, T2, if you have uh, H of T1 uh, minus T1, T1 square times R to the 2 to the T1 t2 squared times r to the 2. So that actually it means that we just uh, admit the time just to be uh, bounded in the case, uh, in the first case in the by t1, in the second case by t2. And the usual focal equivalence comes that t1 equals to infinity and t2 equals to infinity, that we can uh, have uh, uh, any kind of so then the classification is, the classification is that uh, for equation star, the equation star is this one, right? One of the following equation is true. Just uh, first of all, the equation is focally equivalent or equal uh, or focally equivalent to x two primes equal to minus x, right? Or to the same x two prime equal to minus x with respect to infinity t one. So the generally that in the one dimensional case we have a model. And this kind of model is uh, this kind of this, this equation, uh, x2, two, two primes equal to minus x. 
And then basically every board is equivalent to that with respect to some T. And the T is somehow discrete that uh, the T belongs to uh, equal to phi divided uh, by two plus phi times T, okay? So that, uh, so this is uh, the solution and uh, you can just, uh, if this is accessible, you go to our paper in uh, abstract and declined analysis, and then you will see the details. How do we prove? And so this is a paper of myself, uh, Marina and Pavel. And now uh, that what happens uh, for L bigger than one, the, the, the multi-dimensional piece. So that uh, now we consider very special case, we consider very special case where x2 primes equal to a x, where a is diagonal or diagonal, diagonalizable matrix, right? Then this is diagonal or diagonalizable matrix. And then we come to the theorem proved uh, by Sergio Alvarez, uh, myself, Daniel Berend, and Bertrand Giraud. And then Darlan Giraud was uh, also that kind of young Brazilian mathematician, and unfortunately, his career was very too short because he passed away because of the cancer when even uh, he was not even 40. Uh, that, so that, uh, and this theorem that uh, really relates, this theorem just pay attention. This theorem relates my first topic of my talk with the second topic of my talk, the resonance sequences from the number theory and the uh, focal equivalence in the differential equation. So that we consider the uh, sequence, the resonance sequences defined by the amplitude the amplitudes is just, uh, you take the eigenvalues, the negative eigenvalues of, uh, A1, and negative eigenvalues of AB, take the square roots of these negative eigenvalues, and then take the resonance sequences generated by this kind of sets of the negative eigenvalues. The point is that uh, they are, the, the equations are focally equivalent if and only if the resonance sequences defined by the amplitudes are combinatorially equivalent as the resonance sequences. So this is the relation theorem that you just come to the resonance sequences, just define the, uh, define the, uh, you, you come to the sets A generated by the, uh, the amplitudes, and then you just define the resonance sequences, and then you come to the set of the, to, to, to the resonance sequences, and then you require the combinatorial equation, okay? So this is how do you uh, define this kind of classification. It's really a classification, okay? So that uh, this is the relation that I wanted to talk about in the, uh, in the, uh, in the beginning of our presentation. And uh, then uh, just uh, let me just show, uh, just, I, I, I won't uh, tell you the proof, but I would like to show how one can re reconstruct the initial sequence by the resonance sequence in the three-dimensional case, in some three-dimensional case. So this is the nice 
uh, theorem uh, and the nice algorithm uh, somehow just provided by Sergio Alvarez, also a young Brazilian mathematician who works now in Ileus in the uh, Santa Cruz University. And he uh, really just also young, extremely promising mathematician. And uh, somehow he also worked in several areas and just recently he worked in the uh, complex analysis and now he, but uh, somehow that just con considering together complex analysis and the uh, and the and the geometry here came to this kind of uh, number theoretical thing that uh, really that uh, somehow this uh, kind of work is uh, some kind of that it doesn't require any background. When, uh, and th th this happens uh, always for the people who uh, prefer to work in number theory because the number theory just like the question, the sequence of this kind of small problems and you don't have uh, any background. Okay, now uh, just consider this kind of uh, uh, the resonance sequence. And now uh, le 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 let us, create uh, the initial sequence. How do we do that? How we do, do, do that? We make a summation that we start to uh, just to sum all the elements, one plus one plus one, up to the first occurrence of the number two. So that we make the summation of these two, three, uh, of these elements up to the first occurrence of two, and we have a sum. In this case, the sum equals to five. And then we go to, uh, and here we make a stop in the first. And then we start summing one plus one plus one, but then up to, we, had, we have five or five plus one. So we sum up to here. Then we stop here, we have six. And then we make the summation from one to sort of two plus one plus one plus two, stop. We have uh, also the sum equal to six. And then we go here, one plus one plus one plus one up to two, then the sum again equals to six. So that one, two, three, four. And then uh, still here, we have one plus one plus one up to the sum equal to six. Here we stop here. Then we stop here, and then we stop in the end, right? And then we can, we, we uh, and we stop where you have the, uh, the number three, and actually in the case of the generate, and always if you have the uh, resonance sequence generated by integers, then uh, it's periodic then uh, it is periodic and three is uh, the, the first occurrence of the day is the period of the sequence, right? And then we conclude that the, uh, here I just made, and we conclude here that A3 equals to seven. So the block here, the block is the set of the elements where, where you have the, LM, uh, the, the sum equal to five or six, right? Good, so that S equal to five, S plus one, one equal to six. I, here there is a mistake that the, the sum, ah, oh, no, the sum should be six, not, not five, I'm <laughs> sorry. That, uh, and then the, where, where the sum equal, the, the number of the blocks, the number of the blocks where the sum equal to five, here is seven. So A3 equal to seven. Now, what do we do? We just mark all the elements where the, uh, that were used in the previous calculations. So that we calculated up to here, you have the, the sum six, so, so that you have the marked numbers two, and then you have unmarked. 
so that this is the first unmarked two, and here the sum equal, and then we make the, the same summation. We make the same summation up to here, up to this point, right? And then the sum equal to 13, and then we go to here up to the second log. The, this will be the second log where the sum equal to 13. And then we start from here that it is the sum equal to 14. As, as I said, which I think the first, the, the sum or sum plus one. So then we conclude that A2, the number of the blocks, equal to three. So that A1 equal to seven, A2 equal to three, and then we just have just one unmarked two, one unmarked two that, uh, and then we can, so, so we have only two blocks. So then we have that A1 equal to two. So then come, come back to that, and then this, resonance sequence is generated by two, three, seven. Two, three, seven. But the search, the uh, uh, Alvarez algorithm, that, that this kind of thing that uh, was created by Sergio Alvarez, it works only on the case where our sequence is generated by uh, pairwise relatively prime integer. But if you don't have this kind of uh, uh, thing that uh, is uh, relatively prime, then the situation comes, becomes more complicated. And then this is the last thing that even, even in this case, but uh, in the three-dimensional case, we have the we have uh, the total classification. And then uh, you have the uh, this kind of uh, it, it, uh, perhaps for you it will look uh, just totally magic. We we define the numbers k uh, s k one k two k three, right? And uh, then there is a, a classification theorem just uh, that we worked with uh, David Lopez Medeiros, who also was uh, just, uh, he not, now he's a PhD student uh, finishing his PhD, but he, he, he uh, the, this work that uh, and we actually published it in the Journal of Number Theory, that this was uh, their, uh, his uh, master thesis uh, where he uh, just gave the uh, he gave the uh, total classification. He gave the total classification. Uh, and this total classification. I'm sorry that uh, do you follow me still? Uh, hello. You didn't miss the aha. Uh, uh, uh -huh, okay, you you still follow. So that the, the classification of the three-dimensional case is uh, just, uh, you have that S1 equal to S2 and K11, K12, K, uh, uh, that equal as multisets, as multisets, so that uh, they can be uh, just uh, uh, obtained by the permutation preserving the multiplicity. Right. Good. So this is uh, this is what I wanted to to, to tell you, and uh, so thank you for your attention. And when I when you you will see that these kind of uh, problems uh, that uh, I presented are just totally open. And for instance, when you can go to four dimensional case where you have the resonance sequence defined by four elements, then you can, uh, then this is totally open and uh, you can, you, let's say, everybody who interest can make his own contribution. So uh, thank you, thank you for your attention and thank you.